Thanks, everybody. Yes. Robin, thanks All so much right. for being here. It's my pleasure. Oh Congratulations my on, on Gotham. And I want to get to sort of where we're at in the season right now and gearing up to this finale, which yeah. looks incredible. Uh, but I want to talk about getting this show because when you get a sort of network comic book show, I bet you have a certain amount of expectations or thoughts about what that could potentially look like. Because yes. <laughs> you've seen it fail so many times, but at the same time, you're a working actor, so a part is great. What was it like when you saw like the first cut of an episode of the show? Because it's so beautifully made. It, it, honest, that was the first thing that, that, that spoke to me. Was the, the show is shot like nothing else I've ever worked on. And also, it's the biggest production I've ever worked on. So to have the experience of you know, being on set and watching the pieces come together and then see the final product just you know, it blew my mind. The sets uh, must be unbelievable because the oh. art direction on the show is great. I think it's the only show, whether it's Batman or not, that has been able to sort of bring uh, the idea of the Tim Burton world into into television very successfully. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm so glad you're saying that too because it, yeah, it's it's just the the visuals, the pure like creativity that goes into it. I think it's a it's a really perfect marriage of in a way like finding all the disparate like iterations of Batman that have happened over the years and then sort of finding a conglomeration, working them all together to come with, and then that's what we have in our show, I feel. I, I would say that the movie version of Batman right now is far different than the TV show version of Batman, but the TV show version, I think, is more of what audiences actually want from Batman. Well, the great thing about the... T I mean, obviously, they're... <laughs> film and TV are very different. <laughs> but I uh, know, it's... A, yeah, it's like... I, what I what I like about our show is that we because we have time we have 22 episodes a season we really have time to delve into characters that you know and find aspects of them that in a film you know even a film as sweeping and broad as Batman versus Superman is you're still constrained by just the two and a half hour running time you know now we have time to like live with these characters watch them change watch them develop watch them learn lessons watch them mess up all over the place. It's, it's, so, you know, you really get to live with them, and I, I think it's very engrossing in that and way. You say 22 episodes, very few shows at this level actually still do 22 episodes because it's yeah. something that I think TV writers and TV executives realized a few years ago that if you want to maintain a great serial story, 22 might just be too many, but... Gotham and formerly The Good Wife were two shows that maintained a great story in 22 episodes. What's it like for you as the actor to sort of see all these scripts coming through and seeing them sort of holding all of these uh, tentacles together, if you will? Tentacles? It's yeah, yeah, it's true. Tentacles, definitely. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's comic book. Yeah, show is like an octopus. There's <laughs> yeah. like thing. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, yeah, no, it's yeah, it's it's a brilliant thing to watch. And also my favorite thing, which as we go forward you know, into season three and hopefully more after that, we uh, we will have, like, my favorite thing is the interaction between the different characters, the characters that are on opposite sides of Gotham City, but somehow find a way to find each other in each other's lives. For example, the scene we just watched where it's Barbara and Penguin chilling out, you know what I mean? Like, you would never, it's the fact that we have time, that we have these long seasons to, to find ways where that can work out and to find how, like, each uh, every every character defines everyone else, and so it, it, along with the overarching character of Gotham City, like it, 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 how it shapes all of us individually, and yet we come together to make, you know, an hour and, of television. Every I mean, I think, and we're seeing that with this season, sort of major villain Hugo Strange. We're seeing how he is end, ending up sort of defining everybody else in the city and bringing them all together. Yeah, exactly. Like he is uniting us against you know a new evil, really. And the fact that his character is directly connected to Bruce Wayne, and yet also directly connected to Penguin, which is that you know it's not uh, it's not a normal thing that we have in our show. So well, it's nice to like to find out like oh maybe this is how like and I don't even know but this maybe this is how Bruce Wayne and Penguin become, you know, like in each other's orbit all of a sudden, you know, which I I think going forward I think that's fascinating for fans who are true fans of the show and of Batman lore and history like this is a new, you know, treatment of it and a new idea which I think is great. Yeah. 
What did you think of uh, Penguin's <laughs> arc, uh, arc this season? It's a really amazing oh, sort of going yeah. from being released to with his with his father and the step parents and the father being played by the amazing Paul, Paul Rubens. Rubens. Yeah, yeah, uh, it, just about that. amazing. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, as an actor, you want to play all all the colors in the rainbow. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Skittles or whatever. <laughs> um, no, so you, 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 that's what you all want. The and tentacles. The, yes, all the yeah. tentacles you, you get to play. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, when I found out, or as we went along, as I saw, you know, where, where they were taking Oswald, and then to also know that, like, y y y it could be a little daunting just to think, like, oh, okay, like, I, I really hope that going into this next season it's not just going to be, like, grumpy sassy penguin the whole time you know and then and then to see that it wasn't and to, you know we had that great storyline in Arkham where he gets all of that he gets clockwork oranged yeah. where all of the negative impulses all of the violent impulses are just washed away and he's like pure and kind and in a way he is the person that he could have been if he hadn't been bullied so mercilessly as a child if he actually had been accepted as a you know a as a, a regular person in the world, which it, none of these things happened to him, so which is why he had all those violent negative tendencies. We just wiped that all away, and he was pure and clean, and yet he still is abused, and then it snaps right back. I mean, it's this, it's this really great thing, right? Like, I, in my mind... Very I much think, like Clockwork Orange. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Like, and it, yeah, it's this... I think of it as like a rubber band that is constantly stretching and then it's always going to like snap back into, you know, what it original shape would be. And then, like you said, working with Paul Rubens is just the best thing you could possibly imagine. I mean, he... You guys all know who Paul Rubens is, right? Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman, Pee -wee yeah. Herman. Yeah. yeah. He's just the best. And... Um, yeah, he has a story about every famous person you could possibly imagine. And then, like, in between every scene, he would be like, did I ever tell you about how I met Michael Jackson? And I'm like, <laughs> nope. And I'm like, put the craft service down. And I'm like, okay, let's go. You know, like, tell me all about it. Because we were talking about this in the green room, and people forget that Pee Wee Herman at one time, I think you said this, was as famous as Elvis. Absolutely. He was just the most iconic and famous thing that there possibly was. Absolutely. For like a five-year period. Yeah, right. And especially like if, and I was the perfect age, where I was the exact right age for that show when it was on Saturday mornings. And so, yeah, it was, it was a cultural revelation to me. And it was, yeah, it was just brilliant. And then now also, Paul Rubens is just a guy who gets to tell stories about when he was Pee Wee Herman. Well, and the great thing too that he's had this amazing second act to his career is like now he is not like back then he was pretty much only Pee Wee Herman. Like that was all. Like now he's Paul Rubens. He had an amazing uh, storyline on on. Um, I'm blanking. Blacklist. Blacklist yeah. Yes, I almost said Blackfish, and I'm like. Uh, that's not, I don't think that's right. It's a documentary. Yeah, it's a documentary about Shamu or something. Yeah, um, but uh, no. So yeah, he and so it's like it's great to see him sort of and and he loves like the the ability now he now has to disappear into these various roles and it's really like you know it's it, he's a just a really relishing in this second act of his career, which is so great to see. How much do you relish in the storyline of your character? Because when you're a television actor and you're doing you know, you're working for nine, ten months out of the year on mm -hmm. one character. You can do the thing where they're writing all the part, all the scenes, and you can show up and hit your mark and do your lines and right. do your character, and it just becomes a part of you probably after doing one season or a season and a half. But it seems like you really, really care about this character and think about the character and think about their arc. How much do you relish that you get such a great arc to actually focus and think about? Oh, it's just it's it's incredible. Like I was saying before, like being able to play someone who can go from the top of the top to the bottom of the bottom and like and how he navigates that and how he changes but then you know parts of him are still always rooted in who he is and where he comes from it's you can, you really you can't ask for anything better than that and also like here's the thing like i like any any time anyone wants to touch the batman story or you know or anything to anything in this world People have very, very strong opinions about it. You know, which you is worried about that? Yeah, I really was, and I, you know, and especially with our show, where it's like, you know, the classic line that everybody had at the beginning, which is like, "It's Batman, but without Batman." You know, like, I just, I, I, I wanted to, you know, be true to the character and to the, 
77 years or so of history that we've all had with Batman. Like, I wanted it to resonate on not just an intellectual level, but a visceral, emotional level. And, and it's just very, very important to me that that, that is always paramount. And that and, has to happen for you first in order for it to happen for anybody watching it. I would imagine you go into it being like, in order for me to at least assume or think that this is affecting people on a visceral level, it has to affect me on a visceral level. Absolutely Therefore, right. I have to interpret and think about and analyze what's actually happening with my character. Totally. And then, then there's that other thing, too, where it's like we're now we're, we're about to start the third season. We've created this creative community on stage one and two at Steiner Studios and also various everywhere else in New York City where we should. But, but like, we are all like, you, you step onto that stage, onto those sets, and they're so majestic and beautiful. I've never seen anything like it. And it's like, it's like I'm not gonna be the one who doesn't bring it, because everyone else is bringing it. And we're all like, in, I'm inspired by my co-stars and by our crew and everything. It's just like, again, it's a creative community where everybody elevates themselves. And it just feels so fortunate to be a part of it that if I'm not bringing a billion percent to it, then it's just a waste. It's just like, you know, and then I'll look back and like think of all of the things that could have been or I should have done. It's the last thing I want. I never want to like look back at this and feel any sort of remorse. I want to know that we we went full full 100% at it so do you find that uh, doing something like penguin in a show like gotham is to a degree a difficult dance for an actor in terms of presenting an emotional reality for people to be to be grounded and people to sort of relate to while at the same time presenting a certain amount of campiness for the for a comic book type of character i uh, it's a delicate dance as much as i think anything well like Forgive the. <laughs> I don't, I'm not trying to like sound like super smart or anything, but it it feels a lot to be like Shakespeare in that way, where it's like you have larger than life characters, but really, if that is not rooted in an actual in actual pathos, an actual like human interaction and feeling, and you know, I say this to you, and it affects me this way inside, and then turning that out and making it as real and yet as lush and fantastic as possible. I mean, I think it's. It's actually very liberating for me because then I don't feel like I'm being like held down into a very specific style. Like I feel like this, like again, this like freedom of expression with this character, which of course, you know, again, I I have to say like it starts with the writers and with our executive producers, and then it's a dialogue that they and I have, and um, and yeah, it's just I again I feel like completely creatively fulfilled by it. You know, it's it's yeah, it's. An honor to be there. So we're we're moving into the the finale is tonight, right? Yes, yes. So we're moving into the finale tonight. In the episode before the finale, the penguin was sort of nowhere to be seen, sort of laying low. Mm -hmm. What can we expect tonight? What can you tell us? Well, as you know, if we saw in the clip, uh, you know, penguin. I think <laughs> he. Uh, it's always. So I feel like you know, especially all that he's been through this season it would only take, you know, the existence of someone who has wronged him so, you know, terribly as Hugo Strange has done this year. The great B.D. Wong. The great B.D. Wong, by the way. Oh, my gosh. I'm, I mean, follow his Twitter account and you'll see how sadistic that guy is. It's, it's, like, he really relishes in giving me the business. But, yeah, no, it's great. And he, um, yeah, so it's he that spurs Oswald to come out and to, you know, start cracking heads again. And then also, as like I think people are aware of, you know, Fish Mooney is back in town, and so you know I think it's pretty safe to say that you know she is looking for Penguin too. So it's it's going to be an, be an good action night. filled uh, finale. Tonight. We have one of the biggest stunts we've ever done, and like it, it's just so wild. The biggest stunts? Yeah, oh, wow. it's tonight's episode, and uh, you know it's like cars and fire and you know. People coming back from the dead. <laughs> Everything is happening. And it's like, you know, it was one of those days where you're on set and it's like, and, you know, we were shooting this this scene in particular. We were shooting in Harlem, you know, under uh, the overpass there. And it was just like, I, I can't believe I'm in New York City doing this. It does, it's just such this amazing confluence. It feels so much bigger than me. I, yeah, it's Do you ever show up to day. set when you're not on the call sheet but that day, but there's like a big stunt going on or something massive? It's happened before. I mean, I've, I, yeah, I've def there's been a couple times where I'm like, oh, I got to see how this goes down. But then oftentimes I'm like, I'm either there getting my hair re-dyed or like, you know, it's like new suit time, so time for a fitting or whatever. And on those days, I'm always like just down, hanging out, watching this stuff happen, you know, yeah. 
Uh, so I want to ask, uh, outside of your, your role in Gotham, there was a story about Billy Eichner recently in The yeah. New Yorker, and it mentioned that you two were roommates, yeah. and that you were sort of one of the originators of a version of the of the Billy Eichner on the street. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, it, we, uh, yeah, we, were, uh, we, went, we went to Northwestern together, and then we moved to New York at the same time, and we were roommates at Northwestern and here in New York City. Uh, and there was one day... In 2003, uh, where, uh, where Billy and I, you know, we like just we'd been here like a couple of years, and really not a lot was happening, and we were sitting in the apartment, and he was like, "Let's just make something together." And so we created this light, this late night uh, talk show that, of course, was not on television; it was on a stage, but uh, called Creation Nation. And out of that uh, came this this idea for a man on the street segment. And of course, like you know, we went out. With the intention of both of us participating, it was clear within the first 30 seconds that I had no part in like <laughs> talking to people on the street. It was like one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. But anyone who's seen Billy on the street, they know that Billy immediately just I, took to it like you wouldn't believe and created something like just remarkable that I think that, again, like... The, New Yorker, everyone is talking about. So. Wait, what's that like when you are working on a project with someone, you're building a project, and you get out to do this thing that you're both collaborating on, but you realize very quickly that they're just going to outshine you in this particular thing? Did it take you some time to like get over that, or you're just like, fine? Not at all. Because again, Billy and I are, are total, are not total opposite, but very, very different in, in terms of like, you know, how we approach acting and like, you know, where our strengths lie. And uh, it was more, I mean, and also when you're like, that close with someone, it's your best friend. You know, ideally, I would hope that everyone has that experience where it's like you see your best friend hit something so hard and so perfect that it's just, it's, it's only exciting and gratifying, you know? You guys still best friends? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Really? Yeah, yeah. You see each other regularly? Oh, yeah, yep, totally. You keep up with Gotham and you keep up with his show? I keep up with his shows because d- difficult people as well. And uh, Billy on the street, and and you know, and I know that he is he's definitely aware of what's going on in Gotham. Like he's been nothing but supportive. So yeah, I mean, I don't know if he knows exactly what's going on with like poison ivy or whatever, but like, <laughs> but he's definitely aware of what's going on with penguin. When you get you, when you get together, you don't quiz him on it to make sure that it's not. <laughs> Could you imagine if I was like, so Billy, did you watch the episode last night? What'd you think? <laughs> Caught you. It didn't happen. No, no, yeah. <laughs> okay, we're not friends anymore. Yeah, Sorry. yeah, right. Um, what has been the dip- most difficult part of playing P- Penguin for you on Gotham? Um, like, what was the thing that took the most adjustment for you as an actor? Uh, being a public person, I think that's really and and sort if of. You are, I, I, sorry, I don't mean to no, interrupt, please. but I think I think what you're saying in many ways is that when you you're a public person, but when you portray a comic book character, you are a different kind of public person than I think most people think about when they hear the phrase public person. There's a massive fan base who are paying attention to you and want to talk to you about it. Yeah, it's 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 really intimidating <laughs> to be really honest. And like you know, like as an actor, you go through, and I always kept my expectations super low and I was like okay the best thing that will ever happen to me is if I get some sort of like you know recurring guest star on some you know sitcom or something never expecting to be stepping into following in the footsteps of Danny DeVito and Burgess Meredith and and the other amazing voiceover actors who did Penguin on the animated series but like oh the animated series that was the best it was really good (laughs) yeah it's it's an amazing amazing thing Harley Quinn came out of that I mean it's like now they're like People don't talk about the animated series enough. No, they don't. They just made a recent movie, uh, uh, like an R-rated sort of, it looks very much like the old animated series. Yeah. I love that. Oh, yeah, just brilliant. And like, yeah. Um, But anyway, so um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a lot of pressure. And then also just, you know, it's just really, especially like dealing with, Social media, <laughs> hello, <laughs> on AOL. <laughs> yeah. No, like, like dealing with that whole aspect is 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 challenging in the sense that really what, uh, as an actor, I'm going about is becoming as anonymous as possible. Like, I don't really like want, you know, people to have you know so much access to me or you know I I like I was never a person who wanted to read their own reviews because then I get in my own head. Well, what is Twitter but just one endless stream of people telling you you know how much you suck or how much you know like that scene was great or whatever. What's so, the what's the worst comment you've ever gotten on Twitter? I well, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, it's like Robin Taylor is too gay to be on television, or like you know like 
yeah, or people saying, you know, dropping the F-bomb or, you know, all this, like, horrible stuff. And it's just, like, you know, those moments happen. And I always, like, I have this moment where I'm, like, I'm, like, okay, you know, you know, my, my thinking brain is telling me what's true. And what's true is that this is, you know, 90% most likely some kid somewhere, you know? So, like, who gives a freak what the heck the kid is saying? I'm trying to keep it PG. Some Sorry. Like, some like, <laughs> this is really hard when I talk about this stuff. Some, like, some like 12-year-old troll who's just found out, like, what these words mean and how to offend people yeah. and what the most offensive thing to say is. And it's just sort of like, eh. Yeah, and exactly. And, and really what they want is they want me to respond because that's a validation that's like me saying like good job you got me mad you got me mad and so therefore you exist to me for some in some crappy way but like old trumps basically (laughs) copy that exactly you're the ultimate troll um (laughs) trolling the whole world um successfully i might add right isn't that amazing anyway uh yeah (laughs) Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, it, and then, you know, just acknowledging that, and then also, like, you know, because the first thing I want to write back, I want to lash back out and say, like, you know, you don't understand by saying these words, you know, that perpetuates negativity, and also other kids are probably seeing that, thinking they're going to be scared for their personal safety. It's just n- all sorts of wrong. But then again, it's like, okay, step back. This is some kid who's just like, if I, if I respond to this, it validates this, it, 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 it helps this continue to exist, as opposed to just letting it slide off into the ether, you know? So, I mean, and, and so, yeah, so that's, that's really been the hardest thing, is just, like, finding some way to deal with social media and not want to go crazy, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. So. yeah, because you're in that weird, situ- uh, that weird position of you probably want to live tweet episodes, which means you have to kind of respond to fans and you have to look at yeah. your mentions, whereas, like, if you were just sort of using your Twitter as, like, a place to promote something you could put a tweet up walk away from it but you right or hire someone to do it <laughs> it's there's a that good too. T- trick of the trade <laughs> um but you could live tweet on your own and just send emails and then they could filter it and be like respond to this person and you could just respond to that totally there you go. i just get someone to like code out some kind of bot that will just like look the robin bot and just respond with random yeah like weird appearances i'll be doing in Comic-Con or whatever no um yeah so it's yeah it's uh, yeah, yeah, that's the thing, is that, like, you know, I know that it's good for me, and I will say that the majority of interactions I have with people are, are overwhelmingly positive, positive. and of course, you know, it's like anything, it's like the, f- the one thing I remember is that, you know, that troll who said, you know, that I, you know, whatever they said, and so it's like, you know, it's just fine figuring it out, dude, you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to turn it over to the audience for some questions, anyone have any questions? Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. I'm very excited about the finale. My family and I all watch it together, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for watching. My question is if you could share a characteristic with Penguin, what would it be and why? Uh, Yeah, it's a great question. Um, What would it be? Uh, The first thing that comes to mind would be ambition. And, you know, it's also like, and, and so. (laughs) <laughs> to spin off of ambition, it's like the ability to uh, turn negative uh, negative experiences into something positive and trying to, you know, reform the narrative around a negative experience. Like, I feel like, you know, obviously, as well, this whole big pile of negativity <laughs> and negative experiences. But, you know, really what he's done, like, he um, having, you know, experienced what he's experienced growing up and also, you know, in his young adulthood, you know, that, that, that feeling of being marginalized, of being discounted, uh, you know, having, like, taking that and fueling that ambition to be uh, not just, you know, as good as everybody else, but to be better and to, you know, sign their paychecks, you know, or whatever, yeah. No, but see, I would say, not that I want to sign anybody's paycheck. no, <laughs> I would just, but yeah, like, I would say definitely ambition, yeah. Hi, thanks. Next question? Hey, Robin. Hey, what's uh, up? Great having you here. I enjoy your portrayal as a penguin on Gotham. Thank you, so man. I can't wait for the finale, too. Yes. Um, I really love the scenes you shared with uh, Edward Nigma this season. Yes. So I yes. uh, just want to know, like, what was it like, uh, you know, sharing those scenes with him? And if there's anyone else you want to, you know, kind of share a scene with? Well, uh, so, yeah, Corey Michael Smith plays Edward Nigma, and he is, you know, I, I can't say enough amazing things about him. We've actually become very close friends, which is an amazing blessing. And like, you know, and it's also just so fun when you, and I have this pretty, with 
everyone in our cast. With him, though, the writers really wrote into it. But like, just when you when you're on set with someone and you realize immediately that you have natural chemistry with them, like I knew that immediately with with Corey, and also you know yeah again with everyone else. But but yeah, Corey was like you know came to the forefront in terms of that for me, and um, and yeah, I I I, I I'm. Pretty positive that we're going to be having some amazing interactions coming up in season three. So, ch tune in Mondays at eight on Fox. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. So um, and, and in terms of other people that I that I you know want to work with, I mean, yeah, it's, the list goes on and on. I and mean, the first, but of course, I have to say, Sean Pertwee is you know one of my favorite people to to watch, and I just and I love 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 what they've done with Alfred in our show, and I think like he just brings so much gravitas, and and it, never a moment rings false with Sean, and we have the same birthday too, so there you go. There you go. Uh, yeah. I think we have time for Thank one uh, one more question right here. Hi. Hi. So I'm like a huge fan. Nice. Of my favorite show. Yeah. And I'm a big Batman fan. You're my favorite penguin of all time. Oh, thanks. Like, I'm really obsessed with your show. <laughs> um, I wanted to know what your um, favorite episode of this season would be, and who do you enjoy, um, like, which character do you enjoy most, like, playing? Uh, I, well, I would say, um, okay, my favorite episode uh, would be... Uh, <laughs> it's a favorite is hard thing to say with this episode, but it would be episode 16 when uh, Penguin's father dies. Uh, that was, I just, the fact that in that episode I got to work so intimately with Paul Rubens and, you know, it, 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 and also, you know, it just, it really spoke to me with, you know, things that I have been going through in my life too at the time and it just was, I'll never forget it. Like that was a, remarkable nine days of shooting that episode. Um, and then someone that I really want to work with, oh my goodness, I mean, <laughs> it's an embarrassment of riches. <laughs> no, but I, well, I have to say, like, I'm really looking forward to hopefully there being a lot more stuff with, uh, uh, with Aaron Richards, who plays Barbara Keen. Like, I really love her development this year, and I love that, you know, her character now having such a strong point of view and being, again, so... Uh, so removed now from Jim Gordon, I think it's something that, that Penguin and she share in a way, is that you know they've both been spurned by Jim in so many ways, and he's like asked so much from them, and they've reached out to help him, and he keeps like turning them away. I think there's, so, so there's tension there that I, that I would be really excited to explore, so yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I'm curious. I have a couple of quick questions before yeah. you go. Who's your favorite movie Batman? M favorite movie Batman, uh, Michael Keaton. Who's your Who's your favorite movie Batman villain? Favorite movie Batman villain, uh, For Mr. Freeze. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> <no>. <laughs> yes. Oh man, uh, it, it's I mean hands down it's Heath Ledger. Yeah. Heath Ledger yeah. as the Joker. As What's the your Joker. favorite Batman movie? My favorite Batman movie is Batman Returns, actually. That's so not even Danny DeVito is the Penguin? Yeah, and I should say, actually say Batman Villain is also, uh, it's, a, it's a complete tie between Michelle Pfeiffer and Heath Ledger. Okay. Yeah. George Clooney or Val Kilmer as Batman? George Clooney. <laughs> if you had, this is a gun to your head choice. I, I actually, and I, re I read some a whole long blog post about this, about how uh, Batman Forever, yes? Yeah. That's Batman Kilmer. Forever, that's Kilmer. Yeah. Is actually underrated, and I think he. I honestly think that he, you know, could have done if he had been given more choices or chances. I think I think he would have been just as iconic of a Batman as any of the others. So absolutely, Team Kilmer, work. <laughs> Hear that, George? <laughs> Robin, uh, what time is the finale on tonight? The, t the finale is at eight uh, Eastern, uh, seven Central on Fox. Guys, check it check out. Gotham season listings. two finale. Yay! Robin, thank you so much for being here. Thanks, man. Pleasure.